Assalamu alaikum everyone. So we've had one of the worst weeks in the stock market in a really long time. In fact, the S&P posted the worst week since 2020. And just to level set to see where we are year to date, the S&P is down close to 25%. So we're solidly in bear market territory. A bear market is when you have a loss in the index of more than 20%. Now we're at, as I mentioned, close to 25%. The NASDAQ has lost more than 30% year to date. Bitcoin now has broken down below the 20,000 resistance level. It's now trading below its 200 week moving average and below the realized value, which means that on average, Bitcoin holders that are selling right now are selling for less than what they bought the Bitcoin for, which suggests that this selling is largely induced by forced selling by traders that are over levered what's concerning moving forward not just obviously the fed raising rates and the just general decline in confidence regarding crypto but you would think after this huge decline in price that the leverage would have been washed out of the system by now. But in fact, the amount of leverage in the space is still rather high. So if I go to crypto quant and I look at the leverage ratio of Bitcoin, you can see the leverage ratio, the higher it is the more leverage there is in the system it's actually close to all-time highs so there's a lot of leverage in the system which means that there could be a lot more forced selling to come i think if there was no leverage we would probably be at the bottom right now because it's very hard to get someone to sell a holding at a loss especially if there's no change in fundamentals for that particular holding unless they actually have to sell and that's what leverage gets you it gets you forced sellers so no matter what slice of the market you look at it's not looking good and this has manifested in the fear and greed index being currently at extreme fear and it is at these points of extreme fear where basically correlations all go to one. That is, you don't have assets rising and assets falling. You basically have all assets falling at the same time. And that's where we are right now. Now, in the midst of all of this, billionaire investor Ron Barron mentioned in a recent interview that he sees the current stock crash as a huge opportunity to cash in. Billionaire investor Ron Barron said Friday that the recent U.S. stock crash could present Americans with a monstrous opportunity when looking at the economy from a long-term perspective. And that's a big caveat here. Barron said this is a huge once-in-a-generation buying opportunity. Huge monstrous opportunity. He said that his two sons, who are also investors, now have the same chance he did when he founded Barron Capital, a New York City-based investment management firm known for its long-term investment strategies in 1982, when the Dow Jones Industrial fell to 880 in a bear market. For those who are unfamiliar with Ron Barron, as mentioned in the article, Ron Barron founded Barron Funds, and these funds have outperformed their respective indexes generally by a wide margin. So if you look at Barron Partners Fund, $10,000 invested in Barron Partners Fund at the beginning of 1992, some 30 years ago, would be worth close to $657,000 today, even after the recent market declines. And they would be worth around $145,000 if they were invested in the comparable index, which is the Russell Midcap Growth Index. So this person does have credibility when it comes to investing, especially long-term investing. And when you look at what he was referring to, 1982, and what happened then, the inflation rate in 1982 peaked at more than 13%. And if we look at the Fed's benchmark interest rate, 
the benchmark interest rate was close to 20% at this time. Now, granted, after the Fed benchmark rate peaked at around 20%, the economy did end up going into a recession. And that's represented by this gray bar here. However, if you recall in the article, it mentioned when the Dow actually fell to 880. That was the bear market. For reference, the Dow currently is close to 30,000. So more than 30 times where it was in 1980 at the bottom of the bear market. And in fact, if you look at the chart of the Dow Jones, I'm looking at June 18th, 1982, when the Dow was actually less than 800. You look at the chart and really what happened at that time is barely discernible considering how high the Dow has gotten. So the lesson from this, and I think what Ron Barron is trying to say is that if you do have a long-term outlook, five years plus, this isn't going to matter that much. And I know that the sentiment out there is extremely negative. As we saw, the greed and fear index is at extreme fear. And this can be a self-fulfilling prophecy. If people are extremely afraid, even if there wasn't going to be a further drop in prices, there will be now because everyone is afraid to buy. And I know a lot of people may be feeling deep regret for not selling their positions at the beginning of the year. But to that, I would say beware of hindsight bias. Hindsight bias is when you think that what happened was knowable before it happened. Like you could have known that this was going to happen before it happened. And I would argue that you could not have known what was going to happen in the last six months. And the wisdom of your decision is not necessarily determined by the outcome. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're offered to play Russian roulette and you decline because you know that the consequence of being wrong is extremely severe. And let's say in the next round of that game of Russian roulette, the bullet doesn't go out. So were you wrong to decline to play that game? I don't think you were. You made the right decision. When you made the decision, you didn't know what the outcome of the game was going to be. And you made your decision accordingly. And I would say trying to time the market is a game that you don't need to play at all when you're investing. I don't try to time macro conditions. I look at what has happened already. What is the price already? Is the price below the value that I've assigned for this asset or not? And I make my buy and sell decisions accordingly. And I know that this is a really boring style of investing, but I would argue that investing the proper way is actually really boring. It's not supposed to be exciting. Obviously, if you're running a TV show, you want it to be entertaining. You want to grab people's attention and therefore you might get really dramatic about events that happen in the market. But if you're trying to build wealth, investing is actually boring. You start with a long term investment horizon. You analyze the fundamental value of the assets that you are considering, the potential utility of these assets. You assign it a price based on the value, and then you look at the market price. And is it above or below the price that you gave the asset? And you make your buy and sell decisions accordingly. That's really all there is to investing. And it's funny because I remember last year when prices were going up, people would ask me, are prices too high? Is it too late to buy right now? And they were wishing for some sort of correction in order for them to enter the market. Now, when I talk to these same people, they're like, heck no, I'm not buying now. The market is falling, even though what they were waiting for actually happened. So that's typically what happens when people try to time the market. They are very hesitant to enter the market when things are going well, but eventually they do. And then when things turn, 
all of their fears are confirmed and they start panic selling or they stop buying altogether and they give up on this investing thing. So just some food for thought for you to consider. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate if you left a like, subscribe for more content like this. If you'd like to follow my portfolios, consider becoming a PIF member where you'll be privy to my trades as well as privileged content that we write from the perspectives of people who are trying to build wealth in a halal manner. Until next time, make sure to take care of yourself. Assalamu alaikum and peace be upon you all.